the splitter line, we basically have everything that uh, any competitor offers out there as far as um, verticals, two ways, three ways, four ways, balance splitters, um, directional couplers. Uh, it, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, there's uh, the bottom two right images are the directional couplers. We have a T style and then what we call the vertical, which is also referred to as the L style. And here's kind of a list of the, uh, the product numbers. What, what we did with the numbering scheme, um, Evo obviously was evolution. One initially was to stand for one gigahertz, SP for splitter, and then of course the, uh, the number is the number of splits. V is vertical and B is balanced. So that's kind of how that scheme reads. Uh, as far as the directional couplers go, um, you can see at the bottom there that there's a wide range of values that are offered. Um, typically, the 6, 9, and 12s are the most commonly used values. I, I don't think it rarely, if ever, goes above 12 uh, dBs. And for those of you that, that may not know, a directional coupler is basically a splitter, uh, but it has a through leg with very low loss, and then it has a tap leg. And that tap leg is where that uh, number comes from, the 6 or 9 dB value. That's what the loss in that tap leg is. Some of the features here um, that we'll cover in more depth in the, uh, the regional meetings, but I'll just go over them real quickly. Um, no parting lines on the ports, which is a, a SCTE requirement. A lot of folks still have those. and. Uh, uh, the problem with that is uh, moisture migration, and I'll show some pictures of that here in a minute. Uh, the splitters are UL listed. Uh, in order for anything to be bonded to, it has to be UL listed. Uh, back in the day, Regal used to have UL listed splitters, and I know for a fact that Comcast in the Northwest used to uh, bond to those splitters because they were UL listed. I don't believe any MSOs right now currently allow their technicians to bond to a splitter. Um, it's usually a bonding block, and in some instances, we're, we're convincing them to bond to the entry device because that is also UL listed. Uh, date stamps on the back plates for traceability. Um, most of our competitors do not have any traceability on their passive devices. Uh, so what that means is when you have a problem, let's say you've got a bad batch of ferrites or something happens, uh, you know, in the raw materials when these are assembled, you can't really trace it back. So that's a huge disadvantage if they've got a large inventory and uh, you start getting issues with the uh, you know, splitters in the field, if you can't trace it back, you may have to get rid of an entire um, you know, batch of inventory that could really be good if you could trace it down to a date. So that's a huge advantage, having that, that date stamp on the back. Um, raised design, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, large blocking capacitors. Um, the blocking capacitors help protect the splitter from uh, surge currents as well as sheath currents. And uh, we use 1 kV blocking caps. Almost all of our competitors use anywhere from a 200 to a 250 volt blocking cap, which means that we have four to five times the storage capacity or protection is a better way to think of it um, on the splitter port. High level of QC. Um, I was actually over in China when we uh, first started getting this line up and running and got to witness their uh, quality control and um, <coughs> Line, production line testing, which is really impressive. They actually test every single port on every single splitter to make sure that it meets the minimum requirements before it goes out. Um, so it's a very impressive setup. Uh, excellent reliability build quality. Enhanced conical seizure mechanisms. We used a 360 degree conical seizure mechanism. And um, I think there may be one or two other folks out there that, that have a I think there's actually only one that has a conical seizure mechanism. Everyone else uses a duck bill. Um, and if I'm not sure if you've seen what those look like. I'll show a picture um, when we have the in-depth meetings of the duck bill. But uh, basically, you've got two pieces of metal just kind of squeezed together, and then you've got a center conductor that comes in to touch them. But with the conical seizure that we use, it's a much more um, uh, you get much more electrical contact and a better holding force. So it's a it's a much better mechanism. Ports, uh, ceiling sleeves on the ports, uh, they meet all the SCTE requirements. Um, the splitters and DCs have all gone through the Comcast, uh, Time Warner testing, Cox testing, all that, and they technically meet all the requirements for everyone uh, out there, except for Cox. Um, the splitters are not approved at Cox right now because they do require um, some enhanced surge protection on the input port, and that was the only requirement we didn't meet 
for Cox, but uh, they're the only exception. All the splitters are made of zinc, zinc uh, housing, zinc back plate, and they are nickel plated. And let's get to some pictures here. So the parting lens that I mentioned, if you look at the, uh, the two pictures on the right with the red arrows, you can see that's what a parting line is. What that comes from is uh, the mold or the, um, the tool that is used to uh, make the splitter housing. It's basically a two-piece tool that squeezes that material together and you get a seam. That seam, when you try to put a sealing sleeve on the port before you install a connector, it will cause that rubber, the sealing sleeve, to lift up. And that allows for moisture migration up into the threads and it can get back into the port. So that's why it's uh, mandatory, at least for the SCTE, that those are not um, part of the part of the port. And if you look at the far left there on our splitters, you can see that there's absolutely nothing there. We use a four-piece tool to make the housings, and that's how we're able to make it without the parting line. Uh, there's the UL listing mark on here. The UL listing, once again, is just for bonding. So if you, uh, right over here is where you would bond or ground the device. And uh, like I said, a lot of folks aren't letting that happen or allowing that to happen with their technicians, but it is kind of a nice enhancement uh, to tell folks that it is UL listed. Here's the date stamp that I was talking about. Um, first two numbers are the year of manufacture and uh, the second two are the week. So you have typically 52, 53 weeks in a production year. So um, that's just a little reassurance that you're able to trace the product back if there is an issue. Customers really like that. The raised body design, uh, if you look on the left here, we have a two millimeter uh, raise on the mounting tabs. So you can kind of see a gap. Let me show you here. Right here, there's the two millimeter gap on our product. A lot of the competitors, as you can see here, are just flush mounted. The original purpose for that design uh, was to let moisture fall through and not sit on the back plate and cause uh, corrosion. But uh, the feedback that we've gotten from the field and the customers uh, that are using this, their favorite feature is the fact that it, it's raised up enough that it allows their fingers to put a connector on much easier. So they come back, the technicians just love the fact that they can get the connector started and, and get a lot more spins on there much easier than they can with a competitor splitter. It's just another view straight on. Here's the blocking cast I was talking about. The only way you can really tell is uh, if you look on the cap itself on ours, there's an L1KV right here, showing that it's a 1KV blocking cap. Um, this is a 250, obviously, and these, you have to look them up, but uh, this is a 200 volt, and that's um, I can't remember if it's 200 or 250, but this one here is a PCT unit. This is PCT. This is an old uh, Regal unit. But Signal Vision uses, I think, 200. Antronics is also 200. Um, and that's just a lot less protection. That's one of the areas you can save money in designing a splitter is the, the blocking cap and the seizure mechanism. And a lot of folks have just gone to the bare bones minimum uh, just to get by. So that's a good selling feature. I uh, kind of went through the QC process. 